Hey guys, this is Danny with Patrick Adair Supplies here to do the August subscription box. Let's go ahead and open it up. All right, let's go ahead and open up this month's box. All right, so first up, we just have a mixing vial that we're including this month. And then we're going to have our green glow powder. We're gonna be working with Jade this month. Since the ring is named Jaded Tiger, we went really right on the nose. We have Jade and Tiger's Eyes this month's inlay materials. I'm really excited to work with both of these. I really love the greens that Jade has. They're a little bit more muted and subtle, but they're really nice. And then the Tiger's Eye is really cool to work with. It's just a kind of brown and orange, but it has a really interesting pattern to it. It has a lot of just stripes, so it looks like tiger stripes, which is why it's named Tiger's Eye, of course. And it's just a fun one to work with that we haven't used very often, so I'm excited for you guys to see it. Then we're including some fine copper shavings. These will be a really interesting addition to your ring if you choose to add them. We're not gonna be adding them to this ring ourselves, but they're here in case you wanna add it and add a little bit more color and pop to your ring. Just have a little bit of something different. This month we're gonna be working with our black ceramic ring band. This is one of my favorites to work with. I really like the lightweight feel of the black ceramic and how it's very scratch resistant. So this is one of my favorites, so I'm excited to work with it again. And then we have our jade green color pigment. I really like this one. It's just, it's kind of a dark and eerie green. It's a little bit more of like a, a jungle feel. It, it kind of reminds me of a swamp or a jungle or just a darker green. So I really enjoy this one as well. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Our first step today is going to be to mix the jade green daytime pigment with our green glow powder. So for this, I always do one to two scoops with my scupula of the color pigment, and then I'll add about two thirds of the vial worth of glow powder, and that seems to be a good ratio for me. You could always use less of both if you're trying to conserve your glow powder or your color pigment, but that's just the measurements I use because I know that it's gonna get me a color that I'm happy with and a glow that I'm happy with. So I just use that much and it's a little excessive sometimes with the, the amount that it creates, but I'm happy with the color consistency that I achieve. And that's actually all of the prep work we have for this ring. So next we're just gonna go ahead and throw the ring on the mandrel. Since it is black ceramic, I always like to insulate it with some electrical tape. I just find that this helps not crack or damage the ring blank when it's tightened down on the mandrel. And then when you're tightening the mandrel when you're using black ceramic or other materials that can shatter, um, I always like to make sure not to tighten it too much. It is a fairly strong material, but just the amount of pressure that it's creating when you're using the ring mandrel could crack it fairly easily. So I always just tighten it until I feel resistance and then I just push a tiny bit more. You don't want to go much further than that or you could damage, you could damage your ring blank. After we've secured our ring on the blank, we're gonna go ahead and just do a layer of our super thin CA adhesive all through the bottom of our inlay channel. And then we're gonna cover that with our glow powder daytime pigment mixture. We're doing this just because we want the green to kind of be a background to the inlay materials that we have. We wanna really accentuate the jade and the tiger's eye for this ring. So we're just gonna make sure that as we're inlaying it, the main feature is that. So I just want the green in the background and then we're gonna set a lot of the inlay materials on top of it. Doing it this way, it won't glow quite as brightly as some other rings where you have the glow powder mixture all the way to the, the top of your inlay channel, it will still glow, just not quite as fiercely as it would otherwise. After we've covered the base of our inlay channel, I'm gonna go ahead and use my medium CA adhesive, and I'm just gonna go section by section on this ring, so I just put a couple dabs of the medium CA adhesive, and then I'm gonna hand place the tiger's eye and jade. I'm hand placing them just because with the tiger's eye, I really want to be able to capture the pattern 
and texture of the tiger's eye. It has these really cool stripes of brown and blacks and oranges in it. So by hand placing it, I can just ensure that I'm showing off as much of that pattern as possible. And then we're just filling in the extra space with as much jade as possible. We're really trying to jam pack this one full. After I've done that section, I go ahead and actually sprinkle on a little bit more of the glow powder. And this is mostly to secure those inlay materials in place, help the glue kind of set and not spread out anymore so my inlay materials won't fall out. But it also just kind of adds a little bit of texture and um, depth to the ring. Instead of just having a flat background, we'll have some kind of ridges and waves where we have a little bit extra glow powder where it's kind of up on some of the jade or tiger's eye, but we're trying not to use too much here. Once I've managed to inlay all the way around the ring, I'm going to go ahead and hit it with a tiny bit of my super thin CA adhesive, and this is just to saturate any of that glow powder that we put on top. And then I'm going to hit it with accelerator to really just set everything into place and allow us to build up the layers of super thin CA adhesive that will fill in all of the gaps and add some depth to this ring. So hit it with accelerator, let it allow it to cure for a couple of minutes, and then we're gonna just do layers of our super thin CA adhesive to fill in all of those cracks and crevices that are left when we inlay this much inlay material. After those layers of super thin CA adhesive have cured, we're gonna go ahead and hit it with our Dremel. Since jade is a fairly hard material, this step will take quite a while. You're gonna go through a lot of the Dremeling bits. One thing that I'll do occasionally, if I'm being really careful, is I'll use a diamond tipped Dremel piece. So this just allows us to essentially cut through the jade or other hard materials. I didn't use it on this one just because the dremeling was working fairly well this time around, but a lot of the times I'll wish I had one of those to use. So keep that in mind. If you want to go through a harder material, you can use a diamond tipped dremel piece to kind of like cut through the hard inlay materials. You have to be really careful when doing so because you can really damage your in your your ring blank if you nick it especially if it's tungsten or black ceramic if you nick it with the diamond cutting diamond cutting rod you can just dig really deep into it and then you'll essentially have ruined your blank because there won't be a, a great way to fix that divot One thing to note with the dremeling, I am switching out fairly often. I'm using an 80 grit dremel bit and I'm switching out as often as I can just to ensure that I'm optimizing the amount of time that I'm using. You could maybe, I could maybe use these pieces for a little bit longer, but the amount of time I would save just isn't worth it for me. So I'm going through a lot of these pieces, just dremeling until they're fairly smooth, swapping it out for another one, just to ensure that I'm using as low of a grit as possible at all times.
Once we've dry mold everything flush, we're gonna go ahead and use our 220 sandpaper and just do a quick sand over the whole ring. I always do a wet sand right before I do the final layer of super thin CA adhesive just to ensure that any air bubbles or pockets can be exposed that are close enough for the surface to create a problem. Generally, we don't have a ton of those, but I like to make sure that it's not gonna be an issue later on. So I always do the 220 grit sandpaper, wet sand, just to smooth everything out, check for any imperfections, and it gives me a good idea of what the ring is gonna look like when it's finished. After we do that layer of super thin CA adhesive and allow it to cure, we're gonna go ahead and just do our sanding. I'm doing 220, 500, and 1000 grit for this ring. I could go up higher. Those are just honestly the, the sandpapers that I use the majority of the time. I find that going up to a thousand, if I've done a good job of sanding with 220 and 500, it allows me to achieve a really nice polish and finish without having to spend all that extra time sanding to go all the way up to like a 3000 grit. So that's what I do, that's what I like. You can go higher if you want, but that's what I find works best for me. After we finish with the sanding process, going all the way up to a thousand, I'm gonna go ahead and use our liquid polishes, our Astrotex Astrotech polishes step one, two, and three for this ring. I just really like the combo of the three, especially using some harder inlay materials. It's nice to use all three to ensure that we can get a good shine out of our tiger's eye and our jade. And getting a good polish on this ring is important to me because it allows us to really accentuate and show off that tiger's eye. It's such a cool material to work with. It's really pretty when you capture that look to it. And honestly, I think we achieved it. I'm really happy with how the tiger's eye and the jade really pop off and accent each other nicely. I think this ring looks fantastic and I hope you guys had as much fun making it as I did. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed making this one as much as I did. I really like this jaded tiger ring. It reminds me a lot of those images you see coming out of the rainforest and the jungles of tigers kind of crouching behind those giant leaves. And I really think it does a good job of, of bringing forth that imagery of the tiger crouching behind the leaves. And I love the contrast between the green color pigment and the tiger's eye with the browns and oranges and that dark kind of wet green. I think it's a really cool ring and I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. See you next month.